Christmas season and the children arrive, eager for company rehearsal. In the build hall, scenic artists strive to dress the tree with striking decoration before the candlelights go live. It seems more difficult this year. <laughs> Why is that? It was said last year that it looked the best he had ever done. Okay. You must disguise this ugly little bit here, but Apple. Apple. <laughs> Find out. Get the apple out. Well, the thing is, because the set is now what thirty years old or so, it can be quite fragile. So we just have to care for it. It may be with us for another 30 years. And of course, everything is sort of duplicated because it begins small and grows larger and larger. The room gets larger. So you're almost doing everything twice. I mean, this tree is, it only starts off you know, about five feet high and then, then grows and grows and grows. Wonderful. It's surprising. It's when you're high up here, it seems so much higher. <laughs> Royal Ballet Lower School warming up as Catrack takes them through their paces. Our leg exactly together, slide any point to right, and close, and all one. Be there by two ladies, allonge on three, and two. Boys and girls focusing their efforts, reflected in their faces. Two small posts of on, one, and two, and a three, and four, derriere, five. Good, front leg to the back. Morning class wakes the adults too, plan to perfect their technique. However experienced the dancer here, they won't escape Olga's critique. time in the canteen, a dancer has to eat. For five minutes or fifteen, it's rest time for the feet. <laughs> Countdown to the nutcracker. Six hundred costumes are prepared. Thousands of sequins sewed and glued with care. Everything's got sequins on it. I mean, this, this skirt has them all around the bottom. They're sparkled up the top as well. The snowflakes are smothered in them. Outfits dating from the original production in 1984. Revamped for the next generation, will enchant for several years more. The company gather in Studio de Valois, where the whip is cracked by Christopher Carr. Same thing, and. You're already halfway on and she's not even out the wing. You have to come together as a pair, meet in the centre, and then lots of gossip. And... Wait for Dave to call you. On! This is uh, the first time we've put the whole ballet together. Uh, we've been rehearsing it for about four weeks. It's actually a year since we've done it, so the casting has changed quite a bit. 
Fritz, there's three cars, and Clara, there's about five cars. If you can see all of that, it's actually 21 performances of the Nutcracker, which takes took about a month to work it out. And Johnny, just a little bit more formal with your dad when you see him, yes? Be a little bit more, a little bit more, um, do you shake hands, Dave? Yes. The Fritz, uh, there were three uh, offered, so. and then I just saw out of the corner yeah. of my eye, at the side of the room, a, another party uh, boy, and so who looked very interesting. And so actually, we hope we've got instant stardom, and he's now become the first cast. Uh, his name is Johnny, and uh, we've just seen him now. That's the first time he's done it with everybody here, so very exciting for him. Formal, yes. And to your mother. It's a very complicated piece, and uh, even when we get on stage, it becomes even more complicated with the costumes and scenery and everything, and flying in it, and angels, and very complicated. One, two, and... It was one of the very first ballets that I did as a ballet master, which is something like 25 years ago or something. But it's still quite nervy. Uh, to, to, to be in the centre of the room and to control the whole room. I still find it a huge task. I had um, stomach ache last night, Sunday night, before I came in. Yeah, it's, it's still quite nervy. I normally go from over there. We and came, so then we I changed So you have a palms. change of hands. OK, so if you can really make it so that we were over there, so if you really focus on over, over there, there, and then we came. And then don't go arms... Head, try and bring them together. Yeah. Everywhere there's rehearsals of individual scenes to perfect the nutcracker of our dreams. But I, yes, yeah, so make sure this doesn't go across to heart. Make sure it stays in the centre. Before too long, it's time to get ready. Lights awaken, illuminating the stage. In hair and makeup, hands are steady. Placing wigs and spraying lacquer, people working across the house to bring you our gorgeous okay. and festive nutcracker. can't help being bowled over by the spectacle of it all, the wonderful scenery, the growing tree, the tricks, the transformations. But also the score by Tchaikovsky is fantastic. And I think the way Peter Wright has put his production to this music really tells the story. It starts with Drosselmeyer upset in the fact that his nephew has been encapsulated in this spell by the Mouse King. The only way to break the spell is by finding love. So he decides to go off, take his wooden nutcracker, which is his nephew, and he entrusts it to Clara, and uh, then the magic begins. You're a doll, you know, you're not a person, and then you meet Clara as she goes into this magical world, and in the course of that, she breaks the spell, and you turn into Drosselmeyer's nephew again, so the spell's been broken and, and she sees you as a human, hopefully quite likes your face. I think Clara is completely stunned to see that her beautiful doll has actually come to life. It's like when you're small and the boy on your poster maybe actually <laughs> comes to life, it's quite a cool thing to happen I guess. Like Zayn Malik coming to life. <laughs> And then the journey begins, where Drosselmeyer then takes them on their journey to the Land of Sweets. Quite a hard balance with the Sugar Mom Fairy because she has to appear to be ethereal and gracious and light, but it's really challenging. I don't really want to say this to ruin the magic, but it's so hard. But in my opinion, she's the jewel of the ballet and you want the audience to almost feel like they could hear a pin drop. And up. Well, Christopher Carr is amazing. He produces and stages the ballet for Sir Peter Wright. Feel it? Yes, it was very good. Oh, I was there when he was creating it, when Sir Peter Wright was creating it, because it was the very first ballet that I was in charge of as a ballet master. 
One and right two. Corner. Sharp, sharp. He knows every count, where everybody needs to be at what point in the ballet. And uh, up. I don't like shortcuts. I don't like fudging. If I just stay more on place, James. I like it to be as clear and as crisp as it can be. One and a two and a three and a four. I push them to the limit. Yaggedy, daggedy, daggedy heel. Because I want it to be the very best it can be. We're on the fifth floor of the Royal Opera House and we're deep into rehearsals for Nutcracker at the moment. And the wonderful thing that happens with Nutcracker is that it's not just about all the Royal Ballet Company getting really festive, it also incorporates the Royal Ballet Upper School and the Royal Ballet Lower School. It helps you see what it's like to be a dancer and like what it's like to be on stage. We need pressure. It's just a really good experience to work with the company. It's going to change my life a little bit because I can say to my mum and my family that I've been of a Nutcracker. Big circle. I think the first time I saw the Nutcracker, I was also dancing in the Nutcracker. But I was age 11 and I was, it was my first trip to the Royal Ballet School. To be on the Royal Opera House stage at the age of 11 is what you dream of doing. However many years later, um, I now coach and rehearse the dancers. My main role is the snowflakes. It's tough to do. It's a cardiovascular workout because you don't stop. You've got to have quick feet, quick hands, shimmying, sparkle. You can't give in for a minute. You're running around, making patterns and shapes. And that's what makes it so interesting. I'll focus on eye line and heads, which way we're looking, counts, the dynamic, and then just push, push them for stamina. I saw Peter Wright's Nutcracker for the first time when I was two years old, and I can't believe that here I am doing it about 20 years later. There is nothing like standing there, throwing my arms up in the air, producing glitter, having a big spangly cloak. It's just awesome. For me, it's, it makes my Christmas. It is magic. Can't help it. Wow, that, that's, that's amazing. What more Christmas could you get than Nutcracker? You couldn't get any more Christmas. It's really a celebration of love and family, and I think that's what brings it all together so beautifully. Our shoes are so important to us because it's it's everything. Everything starts from the foot up, really. And you have to feel like you're in the right shoe. Sometimes if I'm wearing the wrong shoes, I feel like I've got someone else's legs on it. It's a really odd feeling. And the girls get through so many shoes because, you know, we, at the moment, we're rehearsing about four different ballets and they must be changing their shoes you every can get through, hour. Yeah. It's a lot of work and a lot of shoes. My name is Jane Latimer and I'm responsible for keeping all the girls and boys, actors, actresses and students in the Royal Ballet in shoes. What we have to remember here is that the shoes are all handmade. You know, they're, they're not sort of churned out um, of a machine. You have chaps in a workroom making point shoes. Mara, for instance, has actually been, until recently, completely reliant on Bob Martin who um, I think made her shoes from the moment she came into the company. It was a terrible day when Bob retired because the dancers get very used to a particular maker. Mara used to say to me, oh, I've changed her life forever. Whether it has or not, I don't know, but that's what she always used to say to me. I've made thousands of point shoes over the years because they're a throwaway product at the end of the day. It's a tool for the dancers. It seems a horrendous amount of, of shoes, but each act the shoe has to be prepared for that act. So in some ballets where they're hard on point shoes, they would use three pairs of point shoes per performance, as each act, the shoe has got to react in a different way. Our job is very much um, a partnership between the dancers and the shoe room. The work that they put into their shoes and the work that we put into trying to procure the best shoes we possibly can for them. Well, I'm gonna show you the process here because this is how they come, bright and nice and new. So I cut the elastic, so I measure exactly how tight I want it. 
and in four. And then what I do, I saw the elastic and I cut the ribbons as well. I take the measure as well of the ribbon. So I cut four ribbons as well. And I saw the elastic like this across. And then the ribbon here inside, so you don't see. And what I do, I um, shellac them with a special um, glue. I band them really hard so they, it gets soft, so they, they don't make this noise when I run on stage or when I dance, because I, I really can't stand. It distracts me, actually, if it's too hard. Uh, and then I wear them in class, and they become like this, nice and soft, and then soft here, and then I'm soft in this area. And then this is ready for my first show back on my lid. And they end up like this by the end of the show. The dancers are obviously very appreciative of the generous contributions that people make to the point shoe appeal. Point shoes and all the dancers footwear is the basis of everything that they do on stage and absolutely essential. So thank you.